Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna show you how to install a Timken V-Lock, and in order to do that, you need somebody from Timken. And I got just the guy, Seth Birchill. Welcome, Seth, good to have you back in the program. Thanks, Tom. Great to have you here. Now, we've got a big demo going on here. We've got a lot of stuff happening. So let's ask you the question right off the bat. What are some of the biggest challenges that you are faced when it comes with housed units? Well, two common issues involve repairing or replacing worn shafts due to damage from set screws and properly sealing the bearing to protect against contaminants that most housed units faced when in operation. Luckily, Timken has a solution for both of these issues. And the facility can save on repairs and replacements by using our V-Lock to secure their house unit to the shaft. So this not only um, saves that extra expense on shaft repair and replacement, but it also seals it to potentially double the life of the existing house unit. And I want to see how all this works, but first you know what we got to do. Appropriate PPE, that's what it calls for. No matter what the job calls for, make sure you're wearing the personal protective equipment that will keep you safe because safety is always a priority. Number one, we got gloves and glasses on. So Seth, I think we're ready to go. It's all on you. Tom, take a look at this photo where we see the damage a set screw can cause due to the point contact the set screw has when torqued to set the bearing on the shaft. Ooh. With the V-Lock solution, you do have an option to replace a set screw lock type bearing on the shaft without having to do much shaft repair. If the shaft is badly damaged, the customer may need to do a quick file to get rid of any burrs or if the shaft is damaged badly enough, send out the shaft for repair or even replacement. Now, you're really telling me that just the one little set screw can really cause all that damage? Yeah, and depending on the nature of the application, it could result in a lengthy downtime to remove and replace. All right, so how is the Timken V-Lock going to make that process easier and, and, and not just ruin our shaft? So, Tom, I'll demonstrate the installation process for you. We're going to look at a standard double V-Lock, which incorporates a sleeve, a sleeve nut, and a wedge nut. All right, and that's what we have right here, right? Right. Okay. So first we need to confirm that our shaft is uh, within tolerance. Right. And I seem to be missing my micrometer. Oh, oh, really? Oh, I just happen to have one in my back pocket right here. A man prepared. Our shaft seems to be within tolerance. What's next? Well, this is, this is the internal to the double V-lock, and you can see we have a sleeve, right. a withdrawal sleeve nut, and our wedge. When you talk about double V-lock, this is what you're talking right here. Correct. Okay. It's a double taper. Gotcha. So when we tighten this bearing on the shaft, you can see here that sleeve, the wedge nut literally bottoms out in the sleeve so you cannot over tighten it, which is great for maintenance because that uh, takes the guesswork out of putting a bearing on the shaft. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to slide our sleeve on the shaft here. We're going to bring our bearing in. The critical part of this installation initially is we want to ensure that we've properly seated the bearing against the back side of the sleeve. Well, what if it's not seated properly, though? Well, if it's not properly seated, the bearing's not going to be in the correct position internally on the sleeve, and it's not going to give you your uh, optimum time for run. Gotcha. Okay, keep going. So <clears throat> we're going to take our housing bolts, and we're going to loosely mount those into here so we make sure our bearing sets itself in its final resting place. All right. So once I'm ensured that I'm properly seated on the sleeve, I'm going to bring my wedge nut in. Okay. And I'm going to hand tighten this until I need to use my torque wrench. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to check the back of my sleeve and I can even tap on this bearing if need be with the hammer. The larger bearings will need a bigger hammer. So I'm going to bring my sleeve nut up and we actually have uh, V-lock spanner wrenches. So I'm gonna tighten my wedge nut until I can't tighten it anymore. All right. <clears throat> As you can see, that was bottoming out when we demoed before. Gotcha. So if you feel that, you can feel that's pretty tight. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. Okay. okay. So the bearing's properly set. I'm gonna bolt my housing into place. <clears throat> now I'm gonna bring my withdrawal sleeve nut up to the back of the bearing. Now it's not critical that I over torque my withdrawal sleeve nut because I'm not going to be using this until I withdraw the bearing from the shaft. So typically I'm just going to cover the threads or bring it hand tight up against the back of the bearing, torque my set screws down, which once again are not going into the shaft, they're going into the sleeve threads. Okay. And so we're not going to get any damage to the shaft like we saw earlier. Correct. Then I'll come over to my wedge nut and do the same to the set screws here, and we're set. 
Now, does this type of bearing only come in this particular style? No, we also have a single V-lock, which would just incorporate a sleeve and a wedge. So you're not going to have the withdrawal sleeve nut in the back side of it, All right. which makes it a great setup for those applications where you have limited space in the back side of your bearing. Okay, so both of these bearings you can't over tighten. Now, I know with other bearing styles that can be an issue. I mean, taking the RIC or what they call the radial internal clearance into effect out of the bearing by over tightening, forcing the bearing, it could run hot, it could fail prematurely. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, in the case of an SAF style bearing, uh, maintenance people need to use feeler gauges mm -hmm. to continue to check the radial internal clearance as they're tightening the, the nut. Oh, that's awesome, Tim. Thank you so much. Good stuff. It is the Timken V-Lock housing unit, and that was Seth Burchill with Timken. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Add those to your toolbox. What a nice guy. You know what? That's why I have the best toolbox and trunk in the industry. That was Seth, and if you have any questions about anything he did here today, please contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. They'll get you a representative on the phone. You can talk to them, or you can go by and see them, and they're going to help you out. Hopefully, this will help you with your practical application. Also, as you see, I got a pair of very nice gloves now from Seth, because that's the proper PPE that we needed to wear while doing our demonstrations today. We had our glasses and our gloves on. PPE is priority number one. Number two, watching more MI How-To videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks so much for watching today.